I'm happy you experienced it. I'm happy you experienced it too. Cheers, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Michigan Bros Grow Show. It's episode 237. Two, three, uh, seven. That's a lot of numbers. Cheers, that is a lot of numbers. Amazing numbers. I like it. <laughs> How's everybody uh, doing tonight? When reduced to three, we will see. I am doing very <laughs> the numbers added together reduces to oh. <laughs> well, what does it add to 12 oh I'm so fast is that right and, one and, three. and then one and two is three so it's seven minus hold on don't do math live they say <laughs> I'm doing very well because I'm getting very high because I had a, a bit, I hate to say it, but I had a bit of a tolerance break in Spain. So everything's hitting hard as fuck lately. So it's wonderful. Hell yeah. That's kind of nice. Uh, so how, how long was it? Oh, you actually had a tolerance break? Well, I was smoking stuff there. Okay. But just like uh, other people's stuff. Or... So, so for the record, yeah. <laughs> everyone, this is not the definition of a tolerance break. <laughs> it is for me. I, I'm trying to define it here. Because for an everyday smoker, grower, processor, breeder, you know, influencer, podcaster, LED salesman, like, yeah, that might that might be kind of a tolerance break for someone like that. You know, what I mean? hours, <laughs> a second set of sleep. Yeah, <laughs> sleep twice in a day. No. I'm, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I didn't take anything with me, so uh, I was at the mercy of what I could get there, and it's not the same as what I could produce myself. I'll just say that, but it's not like I was mad in any way. I, I, you know, but the whole idea of mixing with with nicotine is the part that was a little mm. bit not great, and it didn't happen like a lot, but you could only. The way it was like quasi legal there, right? So you can't possess it in public. You could go into a club and smoke it there, but you couldn't like leave with it and, and, and legally possess it. So you go to the club, you buy it there, you consume it there, and it's all good. You're fine. Well, well, I, I feel like you need to slow down here because I people that might be watching this, we're three minutes in. They might have no idea what we're talking about. And quite frankly... I think you need to start from the beginning because the last time we were together, Spartan, we all encouraged you to just take a fat glob of RSO or an edible or something right before you went through TSA. Is that what you did? Did you legally, no. but not really sort of take THC with you? No, no, because I couldn't, I had a connecting flight in Philadelphia. So <laughs> I had to take anything. I wasn't going to be destroyed and then try to connect and then miss my connections. So <laughs> yeah, I understand. It wasn't an option. It wasn't an option for me. So, I did not do that. And I, in fact, I was, I actually had some of the seeds that I'd made and I had them in my pack. And then last minute I pulled them out when I was doing a little bit more reading. I was like, no, I'm not taking them. And uh, so I went totally clean, you know, into, into Spain. And, uh, and what were you in Spain for? I was in Barcelona, Catalonia, Barcelona for, uh, a couple events. So it was the international, the ICBC event, which was the International Cannabis Business Conference. And then there was the Spanibus event over the weekend, over three days. And then there was the, like a private event, a hash competition called the Legends of Hash, Hashish that's put on by Bubble Man. Shout out to Bubble Man, man. It was awesome oh, meeting yeah. him and, and hanging with him. Just being in the wake of him, man, it was awesome. I was gonna say you you met him probably in a different country, but I mean he lives in a different country, so I guess that's not all that surreal, right? <laughs> right. Well, I met him. I met GML for the first time. That's I cool. I met uh, Brandon Rust for the first time. I've been oh, podcasting. Nice. For yeah. Hour. Seriously, right? <laughs> yeah. Meet the dude in freaking Barcelona when you think maybe Vegas or something like that, but no, it was another country like that. It was wild. Mm -hmm. Um. It was cool to meet. I met so so many of the big names that I've always looked up to too, like uh, you know, James Loud and uh, oh God. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna forget. Yeah, I'm not gonna put you on the spot, I wrote, so um, dude. I'm sure. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> a week. I mean, it was. So was that the first time in a long time that you were walking around 
uh, not with a uh, a little bit of a line following you like a celebrity. Really, you're yeah. the one in line trying to catch a celebrity. <laughs> Absolutely, I was I was like grabbing the coattails. I was uh, just enjoying being introduced to all these you know these legends, and uh, it was cool to see you know Kyle Cushman. I'm just gonna keep throwing names out there, but it was yeah, yeah. all the people in the industry that you'd see. You know, like I saw people from Michigan there. You know, that was awesome. Ran into, um, you know, the, the Athena boys, I like to call them. <laughs> they know who I'm talking about. But, uh, and actually, it got past some <laughs> Michigan weed, which was amazing. I smoked some Michigan weed. And, oh, nice. and, so, yeah, uh, you really didn't have a tolerance break then if you got some homegrown. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I smoked a, a joint. A nug, yeah. it, it, was, it, was a, it was a hash, you know. A donut but it was nice thank you but uh yeah so tell, mean, tell us about okay so you connected in philly you said that's a pretty quick flight but how about the flight over from there tell it i mean that was seven hours or straight across to seven hours and i thought i was going to sleep and yeah you can, apparently you don't i can't sleep on that airplane you can get like welcome to the minutes. club bro that's Maybe why you need edibles <laughs> yeah just doesn't yeah didn't do a thing for me so I, I learned the lesson so that the flight trip back, I wasn't going to try to sleep. And that went way better for me. But, uh, nice. okay. Yeah, so, wait, wait, okay. So, hold on. Before you left, you told us you were bringing shit, but you're like your phone and like a pencil or something. Uh, how did you entertain yourself for seven hours then if you couldn't sleep? I just meditated, <laughs> pretend like I was trying to sleep and just sat there and meditated instead. That's pretty much all that was. So you're basically I mean, that was- <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that's not meditation, but that's what it felt like. I mean, I don't know. The, the just, nice low hum of the plane. Yeah, the, uh, I was close. I was getting bumped by the flight attendants. You know, every about that's five. That aisle seat, bro. You, <laughs> yeah. That's that aisle seat. Yeah, it was like, you know, it's like a little bit of, I don't want to say it's torture. That's being dramatic. But it yeah, because you, you chose that aisle seat. We talked about it. I did, yeah. Hey, I enjoyed it. It was an aisle seat. I enjoyed it anyway for anxiety purposes. I had right. zero anxiety. I had space. I felt. Open. Not that you can go anywhere, but you can at least get get Yeah, my legs hurt. I could stand up and uh, go up to the, the lavatory. I think. Did your hard. ankles get swollen after that long of a flight, or do you got like superhuman? What? Super How old do you think I am? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> ankles get swollen. Yeah, my diabetes kicked in all of a sudden. <laughs> my ankles started to swell. It was terrible. I had too many gummies right before you got on. You know, <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I didn't have any ankle swelling to my knowledge. Uh, my ass started to hurt for a while after a while. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so, wait. That- so did you buy a neck pillow or no? Yeah, or, dude, I had a neck pillow. Did you pillow. do the buy one, get one half off, and throw one under your butt cheeks or what? Come on, skinny boy. No, I didn't do any of that. Um, <laughs> no, that was a, that's an idea. Yeah, that's I think an idea. we talked about it, man. I think I don't remember it. that. <laughs> I smoke a lot, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, I feel you. Listen, you know. Lucas wants to know if we like were on the same flight. We were on the same flight on my way from Barcelona to Philadelphia. He was in the section above in front of me, so we couldn't, you know, we weren't even in the same section. Are you saying he's in first class? No, I think it was business class that he was in. I was Ooh, Comfort Plus, getting those free drinks, a little bit like four inches extra room. It's nice for them tall folk. Yeah, <laughs> he's not exactly a tall folk either, so he probably had plenty of room. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, it was all right. I on the way back, I watched four freaking movies, so that was cool. I was like, that made right. the time go way faster. What'd you watch? So the first one was Friday. So okay, nice. Oh, that I was like, dude, watching that. Wait, don't tell me you just watched Friday, Friday and after next. Like you just went through the whole series. I just watched now. the first one. The first one was all I wanted to see. I didn't watch okay. all. Okay, I watched the first one, and then I watched the movie about um, the Game Stop. While everybody. Oh, ah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Good wait, wait, there's a, a few of them just came out. The one on uh, the one with like the actual like Hollywood actors and stuff. What's his name? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, it was. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah that's pretty um, good. It was American Airlines, so whatever version they have, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and what was the other? Damn, now I can put. Oh, uh, Expendables Four. Damn. I watched that. I there's four of those. Me either. And I was like, four. <laughs> Somehow I missed three. That's pretty good. That's pretty that's good. good. The same number of Friday movies. Yeah. Yeah. And what was the fourth movie now? I don't know. I can't even think of it. It'll come. Yeah. Just like the names of everybody you met. It's just one of those things. It's yeah. a wild whirlwind of an experience, you know? 
So tell yeah. us more about like, okay, so once you got there, I mean, we were uh, in our group chat, the MBGS group chat, you blessed us with a lot of really cool photos of some architecture and stuff like that. Tell us a little bit more about like that, like the culture and stuff that you experienced more outside of the cannabis stuff before we get to yeah. that. That was cool because I got there a day before the boss showed up, right? So, so <laughs> yeah, so GML and Thomas were, or GML and Marcus, Bubble Man they were flying from Canada. So they were like a day behind us. They went from Canada to London, I think it was, and then from uh -huh. London to, to Barcelona, Spain. And uh, shout out to Floor Farm. He was flying from Oregon, I believe it was. Hold on a minute, do I have? Oh, it's my dog's just going nuts for no reason. Um, he was flying from Oregon over. He got there like a couple hours before I did. So he was able to get to the hotel and, and kind of look around before I even got there. So I was, I had this, this number we were texting back and forth. So then I get out, just get off the plane, get on a, a cab, and they take you to the hotel. We were staying in the Gothic district, which had all the beautiful architecture. The great fun stuff. I liked it. And uh, so every, you know, every, not every building, but nearly every building is just beautiful. The streets are made out of cobblestones and just everything's awesome. Gargoyles and stuff. And uh, so we knew everybody wasn't good, wasn't going to be there. So we're just walking around, started walking around and just checking stuff out. And that's where a lot of those pictures came from. Was just wandering. Didn't have like a, didn't even open up Google Maps and tour or anything like no, that. One of them, you know, was like the the Cathedral of Barcelona, which was beautiful. Um, I don't know, just a bunch of different places. We just there's like this one place that had like a bridge between the over the alley. My dogs are ridiculous. What the hell? <laughs> they miss you so much. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on. I missed something somewhere. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just enjoyed walking. We found this park that was dope. It had like this uh, giant fountain and at the very, like this big building going off the back of the fountain that had a uh, waterfall filling the fountain. And at the very top of the building was this giant life size statue. Of a big chariot with a bunch of horses that looked like it was gold plated or something oh, wow. and uh it was like so, there's a person in the chariot and it was, it was wild it was just wild to see this stuff and everything was like super old you know like you see stuff in buildings like 1600s or something written in the, in the building it's like it's it's cornerstone wild. that's like older <laughs> than your family <laughs> you're walking down streets or what you think are alleys but they're like streets and and you're walking down streets that God damn! I mean, people, you know, three, four, five hundred years ago, walked down the same very streets. That uh, I I believe it's it's that that one cathedral that kind of looks like a DMT trip. It's like, well, I've never done DMT, but like from what people describe them as, it's just uh, familiar. Uh, yeah, let me pull up my uh, Instagram. It looks like, it looks like a experience. I, on yeah. one of my Instagrams, I had that. That's like I think the beginning of it. And it's wild. I only got a little bit of footage of that because we got there late and we're, I wasn't able to get inside. But the, they'll take you up the tower, up to the wall, all the way up to one of the top of the towers um, in an elevator. But it only goes one way, I guess. And you get to go downstairs on the way down. <laughs> I was still going to do it. But, uh, yeah, we got there late. From from my understanding that that cathedral has been, been built or has been, I don't know. Green yeah, green. it's still under construction. They're building the last tower now, which is going to be the tallest like of them all. 200 years or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The and original architects are is the original design. Um, yeah, they keep exact. Yep. And and uh, shout out to Daddy Red. He's in chat. Spartan. He was just in Barcelona within the last year. I it, it may have been a, a little over a year ago, but they they were over there about a year ago as well. So he 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 he's able to relate to a little bit of what you're talking about over there. So please continue, continue. Please uh, tell us more about this cathedral. <laughs> that the one you're talking about that it's i can never say it right it's like uh something day familia it, it's amazing it looks like something out of this world i don't know how to explain it it's and like no video no picture does this thing justice when you can stand there and look at this just massive structure come up out of the fucking ground no that it's nowhere. Obvious, it is like if, if you were to take if you were to take a guess, keep in mind the top thrill dragster was like four hundred and twenty feet tall. 
Yeah. Way taller than that. Way taller. Way, than way fucking taller than that. And That's yeah, and each tower, each tower, you have to imagine, has like a story written in like statues and paintings of things going on all the way up. And there's like symbolism all throughout, and each one's capped, and it means a different thing. Each tower represents a different thing. This last tower is supposed to be, I believe, God itself rising up, and it's going to be the biggest, grandest of all the towers. And it's like, I can't imagine what it looks like on the inside. You get that is this, thing. Is this what we're talking about? Yeah. The thing is just freaking. So let's get some. And that, that makes it look tiny. And look at, yeah, those are like right, skyscrapers right, right. and stuff around it. And it's just like, Huge yeah. up around, yeah. It's just, it just look like it, it looks like something out of a fairy tale, like yeah, like, like Disneyland or something. Like, you know? I didn't get to get inside it, which I really wanted to, but yeah. it's it does have a little Magic Kingdom thing going. But it kind of rem- <laughs> it reminds me of Oz, like the, the what is it, Emerald City, Emerald City. Yeah. yeah, it's and it's not done. Is that what the deal is? No, yeah, it's not finished. They still have they still have to complete it. Yeah, they're they're hoping to finish it in the next couple of years. I think they said it's it's very soon, which yeah. is encouraging. It it blows my mind that it's been under construction for that long, and that's yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Very. Oh, cool. we got a picture of it too. What happened? Daddy Red just tossed something from the inside. Make sure there's nothing on my phone that displays where. <laughs> I guess that's part of the inside. Oh, nice. Sending photos now. Wow. Yeah, I see that. Oh god, I would love to have been. Yeah, I see that. That is awesome. Side Spartan. No. How tall is that? Sorry. That looks awesome, dude. And it goes. It's very bright. Very open, open on the inside, which is amazing because that's huge. Tall. It's, it's, it's uh, amazing how that would look with the light coming in. Uh yeah, a close-up image. I mean. It's really cool, actually. Uh, here it looks like is probably a reverse. Okay, so here, if you can see it, there's organs, uh, organ pipes down towards the bottom, and it just like goes up into heaven, actually. I'm sure that's what's in. Oh, Dad, popping more through. Yeah, pretty cool. Oh yeah, so I, I don't know what this is. This Spartan is this the outside of that? Is this part of the architecture outside? Looks like some sun shadows. It's something, it's but yeah, Spartan, continue about. Uh, oh Jesus, is this the inside? Now this is this is trippy. This is a spiral staircase. Whoa, God. that's pretty cool. Colorful, Spartan, you're <laughs> muted. I wonder if those are the stairs you have to come down. That's oof. Might be. So um, this is a colorful place, man. This is really cool. I, I don't know if these are uplights. It, it it might be stained because of stained glass. I'm guessing yeah, it's I'm saying stained. Well here, I got I'm gonna I'm gonna try to show I think this. That's natural. Spartan, please, if you have pictures, you share. This one right here, see? This is the front of it that you're kind of showing. Where, where, that, where that picture was that you were showing, like, kind of the crucifix, it's going on right here. So let me click on this, and maybe I can pause it. Yeah, there we go. Let's oh, see there we go. Let's See that church. So, yeah, that church is probably coming, looking through here. But every little, like, there's a statue here, and this statue is, like, life-size. Like, that's, like, human size. And like every see the, every spire that means something different. There's like different uh, fruits at the top of each one that signifies something different. It's it's like wild how there's so much detail everywhere throughout the whole thing. I mean these pictures really don't do it justice. You got to really sit there and look at the thing and see how you know they're not even just copies of the statues all the way across there. Everyone's like different. You, you know nowadays a lot of stone. <laughs> Like looking almost like a straight up angle. It's so that's tall. Cool. It's ridiculous. That's what I mean. It really looks like 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 the the, the fabrics of reality peeling and just yeah. Of- you see here, this is the unfinished up. So this is all done, but this is what they're working on, and it's going to go up even higher than all of these. It's like Hogwarts, right? There's yeah, so much like fantasy world in this building. It's real crazy. I'm curious what its symbolism it, because of a couple a couple hundred years ago of the design. I mean, it it, it began wow. it began it's 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 building a couple hundred years ago. I mean, uh, how long do you think it took to design and perfect? Good lord, um, what 
what I find interesting is modern techniques, you know, are, you know, stonework is usually today used foam and like stucco and stuff like that. Like a lot of stonework is actually done with foam and, and then like sprayed on concrete and things like that. Um, but with that building, I mean, you're, you've got so much history involved, uh, you know, the foundation and everything going up is certainly all of the, 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 main design work and the interior is all real deal artisan hands-on craftsmanship you know i mean the the stucco work of today is hands-on craftsmanship but that's like real that's real stone work you know what i mean it's yeah that's the thing is everything was like stone it wasn't like cement and shit i mean the shit was like it's stone. It's not poured the way it is you know it's more more sculpted and yeah they're just everywhere I went there, I just wanted to take pictures of the buildings, and I felt like the, the worst tourist. You know? Like everything was beautiful. There was always everything around another corner was something just awesome. It was really cool there, and that was the Gothic district. I mean, I don't know if that was special, but there's the there's the Cathedral of Barcelona. Here's another thing I just happened across. That thing was cool walking through and looking at. But yeah, I would start over again. But I'm going to have to jet here for a minute because I got, uh, I think Emily's getting here soon. So I got to make sure I got the door open for her. 1882. more questions. Grown man, <laughs> grown man holler in chat says 1882. All right, started in 1882. That's wild, man. It's a long time. That's like on oh. par. I would say on par with pyramids. It's getting there. 140 years, yeah. What pyramids? Uh, the ones built in the late 1800s. I, I'm guessing he means design and mm -hmm. and craftsmanship. And yeah, there, there is something very interesting about old world Europe and I mean the craftsmanship and the, the artisan design and everything's you know outsourced. And it's in, in yeah, yeah, natural, nat naturally. Uh, Natural techniques, play cobble, stuff like that. Pretty cool. <clears throat> so, what about the hash scene in Bar in, in Barcelona? Well, it's crazy because it's not legal in Barcelona except for on the clubs. So, yeah, the hash is there. It's just you gotta you gotta be in the clubs. That's where you want to meet, and you gotta coordinate all that stuff. So, but is there? Is, is there hash a, a locally grown source or is it like imported? It's everything, from man. Everybody was there for Spanibus, right? So, yeah, there was some local guys with their hash for sure. And there was, but there's people from all over, like Baba, the, the, the guy that you see on Instagram doing the the Afghani hash. He was there with big old hookah and um, uh, Mila, the hash queen. She was there with Skunk Magazine. Uh, I'm trying to think of all like the, People at the top of my head, Bubble Man was there, of course, and then, so and then there was the hash events like the uh, um, Ego Clash, Legends of Mashish. So all of those had their competitors that were so all these hash makers from all around the world, to be honest, were were there. So it's hard for me to say, you know, is that the scene all the time? I really highly doubt it. <laughs> right, I really highly doubt that that was a sample of what you can see there all the time because it's so still kind of not cool to you can't even possess it right in public so it's, it's still on the down low so i would say probably not what i experienced was probably not even close to what even a tourist is going to experience but i'll tell you what i was <laughs> approached all the time on, on the main drag do you want this do you want that i could have gotten whatever the hell i wanted from the people that were uh selling things there i mean it's it's definitely uh very easy to come by now, what about uh, like police presence and stuff? Because you you privately messaged me about um, something I reposted on my story regarding like you know nine clubs getting raided you know over the week of Spanibus or something something silly or crazy like that. Like, tell us what happened, uh, you know, with the law enforcement. So, like the people were worried that they were going to because if you get if you have it and with possession i think it's like if you get caught to up to an ounce it's 600 euros so like the conversions like it's a dollar nine or ten cents to buy one euro so it's not quite a dollar dollar but it's, yeah and um this is still a decent fine for for, for flour uh, i gotta i gotta go 
uh, hit the thing. I'll be right back. <laughs> I got to get the doors open and all that. Cliffhanger. Everyone got raided and got arrested. And now uh, Spartan can never leave the United States again. He's actually got an ankle it on. Still He's still in Spain. It's <laughs> a green screen. It's a, yeah, green screen backdrop. Green screen backdrop. It has been the whole time. <laughs> he actually sits in front of a motherboard. He's on a spaceship. They got Emily too. That's why she's joining him. They just had to get her from her cell. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> I was fortunate enough to visit Poland out west there, and they're very uh, similar architecture with their churches and things. Uh, very awesome to see that all there as well, where the videos Spartan was sending, and then today they're all the architecture very fine detailed um it's just awesome i recommend anybody that gets to go anywhere in the world go 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 travel you know go see things mm -hmm. go do stuff it's awesome you said go. poland yes i got to go i to knew poland. you were polish dude i'm not polish i'm actually german <laughs> I, I just had a uh a free place to stay it was a opportunity i won some money at the eagles a queen of hearts drawing that i did and took a advantage of a time and opportunity and went and uh, it was nice. pretty good good time it was a long flight just like spartan said you know eight hours or longer and uh you know definitely i i'm no good at sleeping on planes either and i'm not trying to take the shine away from spartan here tonight because obviously the span of this thing was very awesome and this was many this was like five years ago when i went to this was pre-covid when i did go to you know, poland but but yeah, I recommend anybody that uh, if you get the chance to travel outside of the U.S., even if it's just Canada, I guess. I mean, <laughs> it's very much different out, out across the pond, though. I remember the, uh, what was it, the telephone poles were made out of cin like cinder blocks, even, and, and just strange different things that you notice. Uh, they didn't use shower curtains where I stayed. You had to, like, shower sitting down in the tub and... Um, I actually sprained my ankle the first day there. I was oh, playing no. volleyball and the gal's mother that I was staying with had to nurse me and wrap my ankle and I was hobbling around on that all week. So that was not the, the funnest of times, but. <clears throat> what was the food like while you were there? Oh, it was great. Yeah. yeah. A lot of meat. <laughs> a lot of meat and potatoes and <laughs> kibasas yeah. or whatever. What about Spartan? I've seen a lot of pictures of your food, Spartan. There was a lot of dainty dishes, it looked like, though. Some of dainty. Them some tapas. <laughs> Five star meal. But, yeah, like top of the line looking dishes, you know. Yeah, that was um, um, Marcus and the guy's name was Alex through that dinner for us. And um, it was a. Uh, two-star michelin restaurant it was called umas in uh, barcelona and i think it was about a 10 course meal and um i could share the pictures i did a post on it but uh i couldn't tell you what, what a lot of it was four seconds like here's a part i was like one two bites i was like i mean 150 dollar plates so i was like i'm eating everything i mean every bite i'm gonna try it at least and uh yeah i'm not a fish guy i don't like fish i've never tried any that i liked tuna fish is about all i can handle and the very first thing they put down in front of me is smoked eel yeah. and, uh, right. and so so i take this smoke and it's it's i should show the picture it actually is beautiful but they put it on like a, a lettuce and then like some some cut up uh vegetables that were raw and then the smoked eel on top so that you you just rolled it up like a little roll up and you eat it like it was so good it was really good and uh you gotta have a dragon yeah. roll. the dragon roll and sushi is the uh the good old eel topper That's yeah cool. well it was that would kind of set the tone it's like i just I, everything i don't care how weird it was they put it in front of me i just shoveled in my mouth and there's a couple things that was a little bit fishy that i didn't care for but most everything was good and most everything had like caviar or something weird on it you know, eel, <laughs> and, one of those eels one of those those fish it's a little more white it almost reminds me of uh god i'd hate to say a bass but it almost reminds me of it of a maybe a tougher version of bass or some bass is really good spartan if you do end up if your palate does get into finding its way into fish try out some walleye 
and bass. Oh, I've, tried, I've tried walleye, I've tried bass, I've tried, tried all those fish, and I just didn't like them. You just got to have a Michelin star chef cooking. Exactly. Yeah, it, just, it has to be all fancy, I suppose. Butter, and the, you got to get the right seasonings and stuff. Man. Just tell right. me $150, he'll eat it. It's important, too. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I didn't pay for that. I'm gonna be perch tails like that. Potato chips. <laughs> but that was, that was some great food for sure. It was great food, but that also just like went to this place called uh, Frankie's, something like that. That had it was like an Italian restaurant. And they had a brick fired oven, always going. We get margarita pizzas there, like in like four or five minutes. <laughs> like you order it, bam, it comes out, and it's oh, so good. Uh, the pasta there was really good. The uh, we found a falafel place that GMO fell in love with, and they were really good. I got them, I think, on the third or fourth day after he'd been there four or five times. <laughs> I tried them, and they were really good. So I will, I will admit that that place was great. What was cool was that it's like the streets were designed like <laughs> before cars were being used. So like. They're not like squares like you're used to here. They go this way and that way. And you just wander and there's these big buildings because the only way you can go is up, right? So there's these big buildings, these big tall buildings. And it's usually some kind of living quarters on the top, some kind of like apartments or something. But in the bottoms, everything's a business and it just has roll up doors. There's just these big metal roll up doors. So the security is like a million times top notch. Like good luck getting into any of these places when they're not there, right? And but what was wild is that depending on what time of the day, and it could, I didn't figure out what the timing was on this stuff because it was all different. But depending on the time of the day, like I had to really watch for road signs, which is a little bit different too. They don't have like road signs. The, the, the signs of the roads are just signs on the corner of a building. When it goes to the corner, you got to look at the building because they don't have like signs. And, um, but uh, depending on the time of the day, it, you would have one maybe a, a different roll up door up and another one down than what you walked through before and it looks like a totally different thing because it's different shops and stuff that are open and it's like one might be a little grocery store one might be a hardware store one might be selling cell phones one might be a souvenir shop it's just wild there's like no sense to it it's just whenever one comes open and somebody else wants to open up a shop they just open up a shop so you'd be walking around and there might be 15 different little the free market, man. Cafes and stores, yeah. And free market. It's wild. You just walk around and you could just try something new every day. And there's this little place that had the best macaroons. Oh my God. They were so good. They're like the size of your, your fist. Huge. And uh they did something to keep it really cold, cold on the inside. So when you bit into it, it was at first we were shocked by it because we we're not used to the, like why, why is it cold on the inside? But Man, we fell in love with it right away. You're like we went to another place that was really fancy, and it was like twice as much for the same sort of mac room, but it was just warm on the inside, and we we're just like, "This is not even good anymore." It ruined us. So yeah, there was a lot of good food there. A lot of good food. Were all of those in like like flats? You know, like townhouse flat style. Like it was all like those buildings. Like I was in that video that I was sharing. It looked like those magnificent, beautiful buildings, but it was all pretty much apartments all above and below was uh businesses um and sometimes the businesses would go all the way through there was this one that i don't think i did share that was an art place and it had all these awesome wood masks that from different animals and uh we were really me and uh, bubble man were in there we were taking pictures and stuff of them and the guy was like oh you're interested check out my other ones he said come back here and we thought it was just like a small little back room right no it opened up to the other side like it was a little pathway and you walk through and you're over to the other side of the big building that you're in, which is another road. It's another storefront. And he had like a huge storefront on that side. It was like almost a, a mirror, but it had different stuff. And it's like, whoa, that's wild. So yeah, it was, it's cool how it's like everything's in a, a tight space. I can't imagine what the prices of the, of like to the rent of space there has got to be just astronomical. Just astro. It's just like, Picture like New York, but like way, way, way older. <laughs> it's so amazing how the other side of the world lives. Spartan, I'm really glad that you got a chance to experience that, man. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be on the other side. I, I spent time in Malta, in London. London's, you know, kind of like it's, yeah, it's kind of another experience like that. Really yeah. old. 
Spain, Spain, I'm imagining a lot of the architecture, sandstone and, 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 and limestone. Um, my time in Malta, that's a very old country, and, and it's all sandstone and limestone. And the market's just city blocks. You know, like you said, there's no real rhyme or reason to anything. And it is. And it's the entire city block. Every single thing on every single city, every single structure on every single city block it's basically one big long structure, but it's different size structure. It's different. Yeah, structure. It's flat. It's all right next to each other. Yep. Alleys, you know what I mean? They're just it's just a long thing. <clears throat> there might be courtyards behind it or something, but usually a lot of shit happens on rooftops, gardens, and stuff. People are using rooftops. Uh, it's it's really cool to see how that area, uh, geographically, we we should look at a map at some point. I'm terrible with with pulling stuff up and doing this maybe i can pull up, figure, figure out a map or something now pull up um but like where spain is there uh the north end of of you know obviously that's like the south end of europe uh south end of like western europe and then oh you muted again spartan but it's at the north end of morocco morocco south of there and then egypt yeah. too far from there the whole Mediterranean. Yeah, you, can, you can rent a boat or you can pay a boat to take you across the Mediterranean so you can step foot on Africa, you know, it's African soil. So it's just like a hop, skip, and a jump away. You can just shoot right across the Mediterranean. For Barcelona's right up towards the, like the neck of Spain, where Spain connects into the rest of Europe. What's up, Emily? <laughs> Cheers. But she got here. Oh, she, get, she found my. Oh, we got to trim it. We got to trim that. Work. Put her to work. Clouds <laughs> <laughs> for. I'm ready for a dab. Get you on. Get your dab. We're mute up. I was just talking about Barcelona. Go for it. I want to hear it. <laughs> I, don't know I can't open it. <laughs> for early proof packaging over there, I see. <laughs> the. Uh, it's actually really processed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this is, this is puke, yeah. We are puffing on some Spartan puke. Nice. Hey, man. Get ready for that punch to the head. Or the, uh, or what's the other one with the, the other, the other blend one? Maybe it's, maybe it's a great fun dip I'm thinking of. But that's not very fucking awesome, too. I just did that and it made me quiet. That's a good one. <laughs> you need some more lime skunk in your life. We, uh, That's a good idea. The, the furthest from home I've been was uh, Beijing, and that was a that was an interesting trip. Spent a week in Beijing, um, six or seven days, something like that. Downtown Beijing, very smoggy air. Um, never saw the sunshine while I was there. But aside from what year? Uh, what year was this? This was like 1998, maybe? 98, 99. I was like 13. Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. <laughs> Pre <-COVID. laughs> uh, Just by 20 years. Still communism, China. China was still under much different rule, actually. Um, let's see. The, the market space there, very industrial right you think skyscrapers everywhere and this is like downtown beijing but like um traffic you know uh highway traffic you know four lane traffic would have eight lanes of cars um you know uh lines in the road were arbitrary suggestive maybe at best uh people on scooters everywhere lots of very efficient transportation short distance transportation um and it, and I, I really remember the presence of like the, the Western world in the downtown area. You go into any bar or restaurant and they would be playing, you know, Hotel California. And, yeah, <laughs> I love it. Like Ario Speedwagon and shit like that on the, and, and all the bands would be, you know, um, some, some nationality of, of the region, you know, I, I'd, I'd assume Chinese bands, but playing, Hotel California or something like that, even live. Very a lot of American music. Uh, McDonald's, you know, Burger King, all of that stuff in the downtown area. But we did take some trips into, you know, some of the, you know, like go to the Great Wall of China. You had to like travel a couple hours outside of the city and you would travel through the farmland and, and shit like that. And it's all farmland. And uh, the area of the Great Wall of China that we saw was like, 
in ruins. It was it was not kept up. It wasn't like, you know, where you see people, the tourists like being pulled on carts and things like that. Like that's not happening there. Like it's all in ruins. It was really cool to see. Um, you know, there's people trying to sell stuff everywhere, like f free market economy, just everywhere. It's very wild to see. I'm not sure how, you know, obviously I'm not going to speak too much about it because I, I know it, at the time, like they were pretty strict in communism and I know it, it well they, they had a dictatorship more or less I'm pretty sure at the time and a lot they were uh, a lot of their subsidies were coming from their government and um, a lot of the money that they made I think were was taxed pretty heavily but they had markets in the streets and so Spartan when you were talking about all of the markets you know what I mean with the shops right there'd be shops stores roll up doors all of that this is big industrialized area. Think of your, you know, your downtown city. And then in front of that, there would also be a sub market, like, like the street would be filled with a market. And so it'd be like the marketplace and the buildings. And then a marketplace, just it like fucking on Saturday, everybody, all, everybody, and all, everybody from the farmland all comes down to Beijing and fucking just throws up a 10 by 10 and fucking sell shit. You know what I mean? You got people that are like, hey, come on over here. And they'll fucking open up their code and try to sell you bootlegs. At the time, CDs and DVDs. I don't know what they'd sell you today. MP3s. I don't know. Louis Vuitton. They had that there, too. So there was the main, drag, yeah, the main drag was called La Rambla. I should actually show you that because it's fucking it, absolutely it, We have it in New York. I mean, we have a, um, what is the Lido district in New York? I'm not sure. But there's, there's it's a Lido strip. It's, you know, the Lido market. Lido, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I, the term I'm familiar with is a Lido market, which I don't know if it's just a knockoff sale market, but it's just a lot of that. This, these people just posted up on. I mean, I went there on a Sunday. I think it was on a Sunday, but they, it's it's cool the way they have this set up is like there's this uh, like a big wide sidewalk with these giant white trees that look like pillars, which is super cool. Um, they're called. I had to look them up in Google, and they were called London plane trees. P L A N E. They're sweet. But anyhow, so these white trees that grow, are lined on both sides that look like pillars to me. I can't. I want to go back when they had the leaves on because I bet they like arch over and just make a, a beautiful sight to see. But down the middle of that, they usually have a few people posted up like vendors, right? But on that Sunday, there's people that literally have like, like looks like Louis Vuitton, you know, purses and stuff like that with a rope going through all the handles. And then they have it, they're holding on to this rope and they just have a, like a blanket down and they're just, you know, slanging right there in front of everybody. And uh, so they have that kind of a market there too. But all the time is open. They have an actual market that people, like you're saying, that bring produce produce in. And it's like fresh produce, like you get mangoes and yeah, yeah. all the exotic, like dragon fruit and stuff like that. And it's fresh. It's been harvested that day and it's it's ripe you know what i mean it's not been you know, sprayed and so the quality of food is just a little bit higher because it's just close and it has all this fresh food available i do like that i it, i was in for a big culture shock and i'm going to go back to just my experience in beijing specifically when i went into the market since we're on the market conversation where there were pig heads on the floor and and you know fish and a lot of that stuff was on ice but it smelled very fishy in the market i mean yeah there's a there's some fishy spots for sure there too as well they had some it cold smelled cold. like your box of kelp kelp meal was like oh that's not good microbial tea for a few days you know what i mean i like guess it, it was pretty rough but i mean in each floor you'd have the meat market and then the seafood market and then you'd have like the the the, the textile market right like lots of textiles a warehouse full of textiles you think of joanne fabrics the rolls of fucking yards of fabric just fucking on the aisles of that shit and then the, the we, we we you know uh f family members i don't know if it was my mom or uh who we were with was getting pearls pearl necklace or something like that and um so there's actually a pearl market like a one area that was like literally wow, just that's around, cool just around just stringing up necklaces and like working on pearls and like refining pearl like a whole it was wild like the marketplace was super wild like anything that you needed in bulk or anything like that that's where you were going to get it's probably where people go get shit designed and all of that stuff you know what i mean it's probably where you go talk to engineers and you get your your plastic copies of whatever mold mold piece that you need for your whatever <laughs> yeah bro you can get just about anything 
you know, I, I don't, I don't know how it really works. You know, you know, like people get things manufactured there a lot, and that's probably where it's at. Um, I was like, I was like, just lucky to like. It's just a whole other kind of culture, I think. Um, I don't know how to really explain it. Here's the best way. Like, I went out in the morning. I'm not a really a big breakfast eater. I love breakfast food. I'll eat that dinner and I'll chow down. But it's like morning, I don't usually ch eat a big breakfast. So I was walking. I was going to go to that market and get just some. They had like little fruit cups, like different fresh fruit. And you can get. But the, the thing was, was they'd always come with a whole big fruit cup of one fruit. So it'd be like all blueberries or all whatever. It's like, I don't want that much of all one thing. I'd like to have a mix. So I walked through there. I wasn't happy with it. And I, I walked out of there. And I was walking back towards the uh, hotel. And I was taking another path back just because I'd like to see what I could see. And I walked past this bar that was open. It was in the morning. I'm like, what the hell is this bar open in the morning? It's crazy to see. And I go in there and they were doing smoothies. And they weren't not they weren't alcoholic. They're just, and so I, I got like a kale smoothie. And it made me feel so great. Like after i drank it and hell yeah 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 it made me feel good it was like that's exactly what i needed something like that not and uh to just have that available at like it being served to you at a bar which i would consider you know poison uh to be served something like that that was like very good for me and it made me feel great i was uh it was cool not to judge a book by its cover i guess another example of that it's really cool really cool now, I love the money system, the euro. I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan. Of it. it makes sense to me. It's, uh, you know, it's a hundred cents, and it's one euro, two euro. Uh, coins, coins all the way up to two euros, which I think is cool. I think they have a five, ten, twenty. It was really easy for me to pick up. I, I was worried about that. I was worried about the money being way different and hard for me to figure out. But it's super easy. <laughs> I've never been over there since the euro was was a thing. Pound pound was a thing when I went in to England, and uh, the lira was the the currency in Malta. When I was in Malta, I believe that their Malta's on the euro now. I think they went on the euro ten or fifteen. Check. We're going to Germany next month, and they're on the euro too. And I was yeah. thinking, I don't know before it was the franc, I believe. The, mm, the wasn't the mark, or was that? Oh, maybe it was the mark. Yeah, you're right, the mark. I went to Ireland. I went to what Ireland, and it's actually two different countries. And Ireland and Scotland. Northern, no, no, Northern Ireland and Ireland. They're separate. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, and in Northern Ireland, they do pounds, and in like regular Ireland, they do euros. So like part wow. of it is separate from all that. It was so confusing because I flew into. Dublin, but I was staying in Belfast, so I had to. I got the wrong type of money. Oh, I, wish I learned quick. You don't change your money at the airport. You get fucked. Oh my god. Yeah, I lost some money. Oh, yeah. Change right. It was there. like my first trip yeah. I went by myself. I didn't really know what I was doing, so that was fun. I loved it. Ireland was super cool. Very, like a a farm farm type of feel everywhere except the main cities as soon as you got a little bit out it was all farmland and little villages and the coastline was beautiful super cool super green it seems like everything i've ever seen yeah, I, I, went, I went in um december so it was cold but not like not too cold um they were having huge christmas markets which was really cool and it was this huge market and there was an area for every country and you kind of, you went around to all the different markets there and you got to experience the culture of all these different places. And the last one was like the German beer tent. So it was like <laughs> a fun hole. Just make that the first one and make all the other ones more fun. Yeah. It was like <laughs> Epcot. Like Epcot. <laughs> <laughs> small and cool and they you i couldn't understand anything irish people were saying it was very hard i <laughs> them i'd record them and listen back later yeah, like so. i'm not being crazy they make no sense can you do an irish accent no no <laughs> <laughs> I, I could try but i don't want to um right <laughs> 
Every time I try one, the Scottish half of me pops out. I go Scott immediately goes Scottish. That's what with me is like I was trying to practice a little bit of Spanish. I took some in school, but it's just like the speed at which it's spoken. Yeah. It's like like Becca was saying, if it's written down or if I could like listen to it and slow it down, maybe I can catch what they're saying. But you know, they're already 13 sentences past and I'm still struggling on the first few words they said. They you just, need that uh, Samsung Galaxy S24 or whatever, those, these new phones that live translate for you. I could, I'm sure my phone has some kind of something on there to do that, but I was just trying, trying to be authentic, that. man. I was trying to be able to talk to him without a fucking computer. <laughs> and accents, <laughs> accents are a wild thing, man. They really are. Like, like that will add to the difficulty of being able to understand somebody but well that's ireland it's universally it's but it's universally <laughs> like changeable which is what's really weird so like i i remember I'm, I'm gonna give you a couple examples real quick and then, and then give us a southern chinese accent oh, no, no no i'm not gonna no. give okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay you <laughs> first <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. So. The cousins of mine they lived up here they're very midwestern very nasally talk just like us you know what i mean pronounce everything without s's and and um they moved to kentucky within like two years they were very southern sounded you know what i mean within four or five years even more they moved to tennessee and they had a had a big twang you know what i mean in their voice <laughs> it, was, it was much different than what i remember them now fast forward a few years we had other family that was also Midwest who lived here with us, friends, very close friends of the family, and, and they moved to Ireland. You can barely understand him. I, I, he, they moved 20 years ago, 20 to they, they have uh, kids that are, uh, I don't know, Becca's age, late 20s. So, yeah, they've been there for probably 30 years. Maybe, maybe they went there when I was five or so. Maybe they've been there for 35 years. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and dude, I cannot understand. I remember like him sounding just like all of us, and now he sounds like he was born and raised in Ireland. It's very interesting. All right, Excellent. question, question for you all: How long does it take living fully immersed in a different environment like that to fully pick up on an accent? Like if you were to say all of a sudden, oh, live down no the south, it wouldn't take that long at all. I right. love accents. I yeah, absolutely love those. Because I've got I'd say, I'd say like within you. a year. Within a year, I feel like I'd have a pretty strong I accent know. dialect. I would, and I would have to agree there because I had a a friend that was a year older than me in high school, and uh, his parents loved him very much, and they sent him to the Citadel. <laughs> and the Citadel is in what South Carolina, North Carolina, one of the two. I think it's one of the Carolinas. And he came back to give a talk to our senior class after he had been down there for, I don't know, maybe nine months. And he sounded like the most Southern drawn boy I have ever heard, dude. And it was it just, I mean, it completely changed this guy. Um, and it was, yeah, less than a year. So, but he was like fully immersed in that environment. Right. So I'm wondering, uh, you know, I know it like, happened to me. Like when I moved to Texas, I, I swore I would never say y'all and, and all that, but I was within a year I was saying it because everybody that's how they I mean that was are you in the Midwest? Isn't that just a Midwest thing? No, I, I'm from I'm from Metro Detroit and I started going to like trade school in Belleville, which is like a little oh, bit more like, like, the end of Wayne uh, County before he hit Ypsilanti. And, <laughs> and I started saying y'all within fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Belleville's not that hick, bro. No, it's not. But like, it's there's the people that I was in school with, <laughs> like Romulus and like the area. You well, know, that's what it is. You're it's and you're it was around. a different. Yeah. It was a totally different. Like dialect started happening, and I was like, oh, this is a different dialect. And no, and like my area that we're in, we're in hipster area. We're in hipster community up here. But like, you get just a little bit further south, they call the area that I'm in Ipsy Tucky because <laughs> <it's> <laughs> very large Kentucky. <laughs> Now, 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 there's also I'm pretty the, sure that's all of Ypsilanti. All the funny kind of all of Hazel Tucky. I mean, Hazel Park. Yeah, there's, there's a very large Kentucky population that came up to work for the uh, the, the motor companies that were. Mm -hmm. think, hey, that's know. my family, bro. Literally, my family came up from Kentucky to work in the motor industry. Yeah, yeah. And probably for probably a miner. <laughs> probably they they used to be miners. I'm guessing or some something along those. Well, lines. we didn't. Fall down any mine shaft, so my genetics got here. So I mean, yeah, I guess we got lucky. I made it. <laughs> and you got that smokers. You're able to retain the smoke in the in the chief in the dabs. <laughs> I guess. 
<laughs> Might be a stretch, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Jenkins, Kentucky, boy. Yeah, find us on the hill, right, right across from West Virginia. There you go. <laughs> I know in the high school I went to graduated from Stockbridge. There's a lot of people that was that were had family from Kentucky there too. So yeah, there's a big Kentucky connection to Michigan for sure. At least southern Michigan. A lot of Italians in uh I guess east side of Detroit. Uh a, a lot of um you know Arabic people, obviously Dearborn. Like we have a very diverse culture in Metro Detroit, but you guys talking about accents and stuff make me think about Honestly, just the United States, you know, and if you guys don't travel much, especially if you don't travel outside of Michigan or outside of Midwest or wherever you might be, just travel across the United States. Don't go, you know, don't worry about getting a passport or anything yet. There are a lot of different places accessible to you as an American citizen. Dude, um, I was listening are- to a podcast recently that was saying that exact thing that um, when you're in a different country, like say like Spain or something, um, they think of Americans as very um, under traveled. And it's not really that we're under traveled, you know, it's it's that we can travel just within the US and literally experience 50 different, you know, like cultures. cultures. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's different dialects in our, you know what I mean? Obviously, there's uh, a lot of different languages here. Um, it's, yeah, there's a lot to experience. And it's it's not even just state by state. Sometimes it's the different part of the state you're in look at the northern peninsula of michigan versus the southern peninsula of michigan i mean it's just it's not even close versus the u.s yeah i mean it's basically a different country you got i mean detroit might be the you know the city the only major u.s city north of the uh, canadian border but you know you might as well have upper peninsula i guess like the entire city the entire like metro detroit area has its own like dialect pretty much accent like there's a very urbanized accent in that whole like area and a lot of people are, <laughs> there's uh um, we're all trolls yeah the, the, what was i what was i just the it, it somebody said something about the size of europe and all the different countries like could fit within the united states and i'm pretty sure that's that's true i'm pretty sure I mean, i'm not including alaska in, in that i mean that alone can take up like probably <laughs> Western, half of Europe all of all of Western Europe but like like the, the the point I'm making is like you know when you travel from if you traveled six hours in Europe you might be able to travel through three or four or five different countries and similarly if you travel six hours in the United States you might get mm-hmm. through two or three states and you know you're not going to encounter different languages but you will you will encounter different languages that's that that's the other side of it though red is like you could also travel 14 hours 20 hours some states and still be in the same state you know what i mean you might be falling yeah. under the same yeah. rules regulations and laws that you were 20 hours and 800 miles ago you know or maybe that's that's yeah. probably equivalent but you know somewhere around there, 15 hours but it was wild to like i walked down that rambla but and i probably heard 10 different languages you know, because it was really a touristy area, and just mm-hmm. to walking, mm-hmm. just hearing people talking and saying different things, it was it was wild. It was a it, cool experience. And I gotta say, yes, we as American tourists, we get it. We're obnoxious. We try not to be. Don't be that that American guy walking around with like the flag plant pants and you know, like an American flag T-shirt button up or something like that. But yeah, don't be that guy. But at the same time, every time I hear someone that comes in visits the united states and they're like yeah we're gonna go see new york you know and they go experience new york and it's like you could spend an entire week in just new york city and then they get on a bus or a plane and they travel oh i don't know 24 hours across the country to see uh, a different part of the country that has a totally different perspective on things you know and so yeah we've got a lot to offer here but you know, if you can't get outside of the country, point being, just go experience ours. What's up, Tara? Welcome. Hey, guys. Minute till hash time. Made it in time. About that time. About that time. I, I'm a big fan of local traveling. Welcome, Tara. Good to see you back. Good to see you guys. Uh, lo- local traveling. And, and, you know, Michigan. Michigan's one of those states you can travel 10 hours, and, and mm-hmm. you know, from coast to coast. Yeah, I was just over on the West Coast today. I was at Muskegon for Gene Traders and just got back in time to get on cheap i was actually late to, to cheap home grow but i got it didn't miss too much 
Hey, real quick shout out to Lou. He stopped by the uh, Third Eye Craft Fair yesterday. I got to introduce him to Nate, you know, and uh, a couple other people. And uh, it was just kind of cool to see him stop by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> red, red being red. I met him today. It was cool to meet him. Mom, hold on. Yeah, it was super cool to meet him. Um, Spark- <laughs> red, Red's like, sorry. Red's like, yeah, I comment every once in a while. He's like, listen, I know I'm a controversial guy, all right? <laughs> I, 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 yeah, it's, <laughs> he's, he's prodding, you know, poking the bear. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the, the, the bear needs to be provoked. provoked. <laughs> the, um, Spartan, I'd actually love to hear about how the gene traders event went. And I was in Muskegon, Michigan. That's on the West side of the state. That's on the West coast. Like Spartan said, West coast, um, <laughs> about midway upstate. The, um, yeah, that's hard left turn into that. It's, it's hash time. So let's let's get into the, time. another cannabis event. <laughs> Mike is eating the ultimate tea vegetable extract over there. <coughs> oh, I feel that one in my eyes. Really. That feels so good. Damn. So actually, the uh, G Traders event was, I, th- I thought it was great, but um, it was an uh, underwhelming turnout. There, there wasn't a huge amount of people there. It was just like a s- slow and trickle all day. But we, it was only a four-hour event. I was the only uh, light vendor there, but I still got. I felt like everybody wanted to come see it because I had it set up where I would turn it on and I had it right at the HPS spectrum. So you know that kind of draws people in to see a LED with HPS. But uh, I talked to a lot of people there, and uh, everybody's <coughs> I got the light. We got a lot of people taking my business cards and stuff too. So that, that's cool. People. Uh, it's cool to like, I, I kind of have to sit back sometimes and think, cause I'm, I'm kind of in the bubble, you know, I, I, I'm, I've got access to information that that's like the general population of growers don't have, you know, they'd have to like follow me or follow Grandmaster level or really follow led lighting to see kind of where the technology is right now. And a lot of people <laughs> just think all oh, led lights are the same. You know what I mean? It's like, now there's so much more stuff that can be done now with it. And it's cool to just, I mean, a lot of people just had questions, and I, and me and Baked went with me. So you know, me and Baked, we just sit there and we're just shoot the shit about growing and talk about, you know, whatever, how light and growing and and I don't. Know, it was just fun. We had people just actually thank us, like thank you for answering questions. We we're always, you know, confused by LED lights or, or always had these questions, and I'm like, just take my card if you have any more questions, I'll answer them. It's no big deal. Can I can I grill you real quick? Um, how hard? I mean, I feel like three years ago, if if GML had been able to scale up quickly, you know, quicker than uh, probably possible, and somehow capture the ever expanding Michigan market when it really was exploding at the onset of recreational legalization. Um, do you think you'd be, you know, sitting on a private jet right now because of the amount of lights you guys would have sold? Uh, here's my thing. Okay. So a lot of these companies have built out, right. And they've invested into LEDs and there's some, you know, the, certainly not everybody. Um, I think the company you previously worked for is still running HIDs. I know. Uh, I believe red is still running HIDs. Like it's not like a completely gone thing. So there's certainly more sales to do, but it seems to be so much more like you seem to be in so much more of a challenging spot and every rep in the cannabis industry, I'm talking, I mean, the guys at eye crusher, um, the, the people that run hydro stores, everybody seems to be in a lot harder spot than they were three years ago. So you, someone that like you, that's jumping on board now to, um sell this technology that is so much far and beyond what is existing in all these commercial facilities um it seems like an easy selling point to me but for someone like you that's actually you know hitting the pavement so to speak uh how do you sell an advanced technology to someone that thinks they already kind of have what they need you know or are you just targeting newer ops or what's you know what's kind of the no, um, honestly, it's the biggest thing that drives sales is uh, our relationships with the power companies. And the power companies let us get rebates. Rebates reduce the cost. 
you know, that makes the customer happy. A lot of these customers can get lights free, and that means upgrades. It means even if they have LED technology now, how old is that LED technology? You know what I mean? What can it do as compared to this? How would you like some LED technology for free? <laughs> like they pay for it, but they get the money rebated back. Right, so right. I don't want to say free, but essentially free. So that's that's an easy sell when that's the case. Um, I mean, it takes the extra work to deal with the energy companies and fill out all their forms, and that can get to be frustrating, but it's worth it when you can get people lights. Um, so that's that's a big that's a big edge, and then with this new technology it, it takes m multiple power supplies we'll call them or you know what i mean drivers that's what's doing that's what's doing the the spectrum mixing and for us like the one that's we've got we the channel we'll call them channels so if we have a four channel lights we have two channel lights and we have one channel lights the one channel light is your traditional led light it doesn't change the spectrum at all it's it's got one power source one ballast whatever you want to call it and uh, these spectrum tuning lights now, we've got a four channel light. So what that means for just like somebody who doesn't even grow, but can understand that like, say for example, one of the things that's really super important for this plant is that we got to keep the light cycle, right? We got we got to keep the light cycle. So if a ballast goes out, uh, you could lose your light cycle without putting light on it. So with these multiple ballast lights or multiple driver lights, even if one driver goes out, you still have light on canopy. It's huge. Okay. It's huge in commercial yeah. space. You know, just that alone. Um, and and then um, we usually use far more diodes than everybody else, which means that the same amount of power going through the higher number of diodes means way longer life on your diodes. That's why mm -hmm. we offer five year warranties instead of you know the traditional two or three year warranty. So just those two things alone, a lot of people can understand outside of growing outside of any you know anything else and it's kind of an easy sell so like just get their diode count a lot of them don't even want to list their diode count because they're using so few i mean for me it was i mean obviously i'm not commercial uh, we're talking caregiver scale here but for me it was like you know i'm in a position we're talking a couple of years ago i'm in a position where i'm still growing excellent cannabis like i don't have a reason to change right and then it was like all right well i've tested uh was it grow blue or whatever i can't, I can't remember the name of the, the led company but that that like led company way back in the day uh one of those blur pole type lights i tested that i had a sponsorship and all this um i was like pretty impressed with it it was definitely a, a difference you know and how things were growing and how you could grow or whatever but was, again still so much smaller scale um also felt like the technology wasn't quite there and the certainly the cost wasn't there now like yeah you could try to sit here and convince me and show me as many charts as you want on how i'm gonna save money in the long run or whatever but like yeah i want to i don't want to invest you know thousands if not tons of thousands of dollars right now just to maybe make that up over the course of some years right um and then finally you know the technology did come along where it was like we're hitting these crazy efficiencies we're having we're, we're actually having <laughs> a uh, full spectrum light not just some like weird blur pulls and stuff like that like we're doing some spectrum tuning um focusing on a little bit more on the what the plants are wanting rather than just the technology itself i felt like and uh you know it came to a point where it's like all right it's time to make the change um i want in 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 a 15 second elevator pitch i want you to sell red on why he needs to to switch to gml leds well i don't know exactly the situation i don't know but <laughs> i mean i would say if you need to upgrade to leds yeah i would go yeah, GML. I'll, come the H, I'll come in as the hid guy well uh, then, the then yeah okay then i would say then that the that the that the intensity gives in my canopy i love the uh the 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 deep spectrum and the ability to just have a, a simple mixed spectrum um with with I, I can still run metal halide um and have a really really high calvin value um imagine having a light that's just one light that you can run both those spectrums by just either 
pushing a button on a, a controller or going over and turning the dial on that and not switching out well yeah but not switching out bulbs and i mean we have three spectrum tuning lights and and the the most affordable one is under a thousand dollars is 999 dollars um but i could get you a discount for sure because you're getting multiple lights I like that i like that but uh it literally has two channels on it okay it's got a warm white and it's got a cool white so to think warm white is hps cool white is uh metal halide so both of them are full white spectrum but one has a little bit more red one has a little bit more blue Similarly to what a cfl old cfl yeah. users would do where we'd go into home depot and get a warm light or a or a cool light uh bulb probably yeah so you want that 5700k <laughs> like, yeah so you could totally you could totally throw that light up there and you could simulate what you got going on right now and and do the same thing but you do it more efficiently which means you're going to be dumping less heat into your room um and you get it's which means lower ac especially in the hot times and uh you're going to get more light for the energy that you're using so for every unit of energy that you're using you're getting actually more light on the canopy rather than heat to the canopy which the heat is your inefficiency no no what about, what about the absence of certain ultraviolet rays that might come out of high pressure sodium uh specifically uv a b and UV. they're not making it past the glass that they are contained in sorry this is not my well, good well 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 the double ended the double endeds are the only glasses is the bulb itself but i believe that there is a a ultraviolet um realm to that that does are we i'm going to answer um fred we believe we, we believe you we agree with you and we're getting those lights ready too. Interesting. And they're, they're going to be additions so that you can add that those spectrums to your light if you so want to. So not only do we have the spectrum tuning, but <laughs> it sounds like a sales pitch, but I mean, this is why I'm with the guy. Now let me ask you, is that, is that, is that safe? Is there hurdles with, with yes. safety yeah. on that? It's taking us a really long time to get our predator light, which is our IPM light going because we have to go to, we're the first light trying to get you is EL certification. Uh, That's what we're getting. And it looks like we're going to get it in the United States before any other country. Um, it's a little easier thank God in the United States, but it's still taking forever because it's like the first light to do it. So it's like when you're the first kind of doing something, it's like they're trying to make, trying to figure out where we fit in the regulations so i mean yeah. i mean has, has, so, tried to, has, has gml tried tapping into the tanning industry i feel like once you're able once you get into that realm once you start running the, the uv so I, I, get, I get people pitch ideas to me that gml needs to get into this and into that but i work with gml gml doesn't need to get into more shit he needs to just age here i'm talking about <laughs> you. he's got he's got a nutrient company line coming he's got glasses with mercules he's got so much crap going man it's like i think what red's saying is as he look you know like how we do with um everything in the cannabis industry has he adopted the technology from the tanning industry into his lights maybe i mean, maybe i'm speaking for red but that'd be I know, i'm talking right about now. the old school tanners man <laughs> you want to match the led like gml <laughs> booth tanning booth. Lay down in the gml lighting booth I'm and the canadian <laughs> white i'm gonna meditate in one of those caps haven't done that since middle school. Let's go. Let's ride. <laughs> well, honestly, I mean, to be, it's just like this is going to sound so cheesy, but we're, we're we're real. We're real, right? And so when we looked into this technology, the UV um, diodes they have terrible lifespans. So, like right now, UVA, UVB, we can't we can't like to make UVA, UVB diodes we would knowingly be making something that we know is going to fail in a couple of years. And we're just not going to do that crap. So, um, but we have, they still have fluorescent bulbs that emit that. These like reptile bulbs, similar. Um, so we're looking at that avenue. We're looking at that avenue for the UVA, UVB supplementation. 
Because it would also be cool to have an LED bulb for reptiles and for aquatics. Right. It's just that the technology is not there yet. It's like when you run that much electricity Bape, through it. Bape was talking about a few times with coral. I mean, like being like, yeah, coral. Like, like 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 being able to grow like we plants. picked up three coral. We we went to a fish store on the way home from uh gene traders. He's like, Well, see if there's a fish store on this side of the course is a fish store we're by the way chicago and i took video at the shed aquarium just for him and said oh i've been there it's cool oh yeah that's a cool yeah there was things there i took pictures and said video to him because i was like this is right up his alley we came home with three coral today yep oh cool i wish i had a good bulb for my bearded dragon that could give her the spectrum she needs and grow a plant like I'd love and, to put and grow not, plants in there. And not be such a draw of electricity. You know, those things are those things keep burning out ballasts. Sucks. The heat bulbs, and that's another thing. Like, is there a way to do uh I guess not because it, that's the one thing the LED's known for lacking is the heat, right? Right. The, right. the the driver would be a strange item to be on the spotlight, I'd imagine. You'd have to maybe a cob style. Like I, think the answer to, I think the answer to you know efficient heat is to use a heater to be efficient adding heat yeah yeah not rely on a light to do it and honestly you know um the the pro tip on i um, setting up a terrarium would be to use a heat mat you know yeah, there you go instead of a, a top heater i think that that's something that we're gonna look into um holy fuck dude uh gutter guard gutter heaters i just i just learned this um also oh, you don't have to they're, have they're using that. That. yeah they're using that in the market garden um market farm community they're using gutter gutter heat gutter guarders or something like that it's just it's a coil uh yeah it almost just looks like a, an extension cord without the mm-hmm. on it. and you just you can just you know it gets zigzag it back and forth yeah. along the edge of your roof and it just melts everything into the gutter yeah exactly yeah, yeah. You, you, you do it along the bottom like you know two feet you know so you don't get ice ice dam build up you know it prevents ice ice walling um but yeah you would use that uh i suppose for really well and with a with a thermostat and a, a, a probe the thing is is that the lizard needs a like heat basking point so, I guess basking. Is so important. that's why yeah. just heat mm. doesn't work. You got concentrated heat in one spot. Yeah, yeah that's like a, over a hundred degrees. So I've you got a, I've got a heat bulb. I've got a basking light and a UV. Herbs two V's is what you need. You need the <laughs> shooting a heat fucking column right down on them. Yeah. yeah. yeah those little, how about a, a torch? <laughs> Maybe it's not necessarily a heat, but maybe it's an ultraviolet thing coming from the heat. I, I don't know if that's a thing. Maybe it's maybe, I don't, I don't maybe that that doesn't yeah. look wrong. That doesn't. I think they're cold blooded. I think they. I, mean, like UV, I know they're UV bulbs for reptiles, so they do use UV bulbs. So it does have something to do with it. UV bulb. Right, right. That's what I'm kind of wondering. I'm burning a hole in the shirt. Ruben, Ruben bit a hole in the shirt. I've had this shirt since like <laughs> fucking. <laughs> 11th grade or 10th grade or I think 10th grade I fucking tied that this shirt fucking biology chemistry class he's yeah. ripping holes and everything yeah oh Ruben uh is 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 That's UV a, light required for right. all biological no. organic life on this planet no no it, it, a lot of times it damages it well yeah but I mean oxygen's poisonous at uh high concentrations too but we need it you know you need poisonous at low concentrations Ooh. Do we really need it, or is it just <laughs> killing us slowly? I don't know. That's the question. Is the sun like? Is it good or is it bad? I don't know. Like you, be, like so you, be, like it, the A is the least worrisome. B is you know middle. The UVC is that's serious shit. That's what they put in the hospital HVAC to kill like ninety nine point nine nine percent of the airborne germs. I mean, it's. it's it, it is in our spectrum, and it is in HP. It, it, so UVC doesn't usually hit the earth. UVC doesn't. Well, but, my uh, it can be produced for sure. It can be produced by things for sure, and we can see it. I've um, UVC I, doesn't hit I, us. I've kind of noticed this over time, and I definitely don't want to speak on medical terms because you know skin cancer is a real thing, and I, I I'm just gonna you know let's just in a 
let's let's have a theoretical conversation where that doesn't exist. Um, that doesn't exist. Well, you know what I mean, like like because like that that's obviously going to be the argument, the the the, the retort on on what's going to you know, but as far as as far as skin damage, okay, let's just say skin damage. All right, does exist to to build up a to, like almost a tolerance, you know that type of word, a resistance um, to the sun and to light and to those rays. Um, it, it 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 has an effect on resistance to the negative effects, right? So. So if, if if you don't go out into the sun, and here's the other thing about the sun, it it hits it it hits our atmosphere because of the because of the angle of the Earth, it hits our atmosphere. And I'm not a scientist, okay? So I'm I'm just gonna you know free ball this one. So so it hits it hits our it hits our atmosphere at a specific angle, and and so the the spectrum changes as well as the intensity throughout the year. Uh, the as we rotate northern hemisphere closer to the sun, we'll get more intense sunlight. What I'm saying is acclimation is, is kind of key. If if you are a uh, nine to five worker, which typically in the you know 20th century, in the 21st century, this exists as the modern era. Most of us are indoors under fluorescent light, and and we become pale in the winter time, and and we don't get a, a a melatonin buildup in our body to become resistant, not just to the sun. Melatonin does different things than just resist to the sun. It also helps resist to deficiencies in other areas of our body. And again, I don't, I don't want to get into, into, you know, the cancer stuff, but you know, that being one of them. So, so if you're able to be outside in the winter time and, and have low level, what blue spectrum sunlight and, and through spring and always be adjusting and acclimating to the sun, in a sense, you become resistant to, to the effects of the intensity of the sun. Um, I'm not saying that you that you can't become ill from the sun, but I'm saying that that you do become hella resistant in the form of increasing melatonin. Now, 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 what I the reason that I bring this up is because I've noticed with my own personal let's call it citizen science, where <coughs> I'm one of those people who who would would have been the nine to five worker. <coughs> who wouldn't see the sunshine until summertime hit and I'd finally go out on a boat or something and I would get absolutely fried. Yeah. And, and I, and I have skin damage. I, I what exists on me from, from here up in my farmer's tan area is right now completely loaded with freckles and I'm actually loaded with freckles all over my body, but mostly in this area. And I never had freckles one summer, all of these freckles and I'm, I'm loaded all the way around it, you know, a little, uh, constellation diagram. And, um, it, 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 it happened in one summer. I got a t-shirt burn, you know what I mean? I had a really bit, a really gnarly farmer's tan. Uh, I went out on a lake all fucking day long. And I mean, I had second degree, it was bad, dude. It was the worst burn of my fucking life. The t-shirt burn, it all peeled off. And I just immediately just within a week, it was just all freckled up and they've been permanent my entire life. And this happened in high school. Um, and 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 so like I I understand the damage that the sun can exist, but I've also seen firsthand getting out into the sun early season like now in Feb in February and in March and being in the sun, being in the garden and allowing those low level light rays to acclimate to to start increasing your melatonin and start getting your your body and your skin ready for that deep sharp melanin. melanin I'm sorry, I'm sorry, melatonin sleepy time melanin uh uh is is skin protectant and and so um uh and, and yeah so when you get hit with that sharp so because i both her and i and becca's becca's fairly pale skin uh fair skin and in the summertime she would really burn she would get burnt really bad but even last year we were outside she hardly burned the last year and I did that last year and the year before probably the first two years I did not have a sunburn at all and I was outside way more than I was inside and that's just kind of like that's just my 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 comprehension behind that and and I mean I didn't have a sunburn or not no no flake and I and 
for my entire life, I've always gotten a sunburn and if I've had to, you know the peels and all of that stuff just on a bad day of being outside. Um, but I, I think acclimation is a huge, huge turning point to that and allowing your body to just, just you know, it, it, it's hard enough. If you're hardening off. We, um, you know, we got to do it to our plants when we take them outside in spring. If you have teenage plants and, you, and they're grow room plants, and even if they're under HPS or something, you take them outside and they get hit directly with that sunshine on that first day. You take something out of a greenhouse, you eat anything that's under cover, you get they get hit with it fries. You know, it does a lot of damage to it. But if you give it a poke, if you let it just acclimate to a cloudy day, like there's hella UV getting through the clouds and the clouds change the, oh the water vapor in the air changes what's coming through and it, it you can get sunburned when the clouds when it's you can't right you can that's what i mean yeah well, the whole thing that your body you know it you know manufactures vitamin d with sunlight so there's a whole lot of other things that sunlight yeah, you know, the, the older i get um so my most of my heritage is greek and my skin color is very olive and like for years and years and years, I did not burn ever, 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 never burn. I get very, very dark, but never burn. But the past few years, I've actually been burning. I've actually like not been able to be out in direct sunlight like I used to be immediately. I mean, it used to be like no big deal. I could just pop You're out there. Not getting hardened off. I'm not getting hardened off. I guess. Not getting hardened off enough. enough. That might be right, you know, because I noticed when we kayak in that that I get my legs get tore up. So um, early spring. You know, get a hoodie, go t- go take a walk. In the well, sun. I have to bring a blanket. I have to put a blanket over me at this point because I just it's and I, it even happens sometimes in the car. Like in the summer, if the through the sun through the window, my legs will just get fire red, and that never did that before. So it's kind of strange to me, but maybe it's something to do with getting older. I don't know. That's possible too. You know, it could it could be anything. You know, uh, we, the body. tales of getting older. Ugh. Yeah, um, and, and I'm very similar. Uh, my heritage is is uh, Mediterranean. Uh, half of my heritage is Mediterranean. The other half is actually much more fair Western. Yeah, my half of me is too, also. So. so, yeah. So the Scottish heritage in me, you know, I get I get pretty pale in the winter, and then I uh, the melanin is that what it is? I, I've got enough, you know, and and that may help the fact that I I have the resistance to burning a bit more in the summertime. But I still see that I still would burn, you know, in all my life. I would still burn in the summer, you know, definitely around June, around the solstice, which got there. And that's the time we're putting our plants out. That's the time, of, you know. I can't even get it, can I? There we go. It's, it's, it's going to drip. 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 Oh, God. Plants out. <laughs> Stinky big. Drippy Thank turkey. You, that was a great surprise last night. I appreciated that. Cheers. I got home from work last night and I was like, what is this? <laughs> I miss seeing you. I mean, it's great to see you, Troy. Don't get me wrong, but I miss Tara too. I miss you guys too. I was, too. It was, I was telling I was telling Red and Becca, it's weird. Like, we didn't do the show last week and there was no, sh- you know, event or anything. So it was, you know, pretty much went two weeks without seeing everybody. And it was like, I'm lonely over here. I don't know where all my friends went. <laughs> it has, actually, it's been strange too. I, I said the same thing and, um, that's why I was I was rushing to get home. No, I didn't I didn't like burn rubber or anything to get home, but I was definitely zing 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 in and out trying to get home, you know, so I could make the show and see y'all and and thank you for that uh, nice gift. That was very very kind, and I absolutely love that. I uh, had that over at Becca's house, right at Becca's house, and I absolutely loved that one. So thank you so much. So it was the first high this morning that I tried was this to see the strength i wanted to try to gauge you know because that's usually the first time you went oh, yeah. you know, we're the best to gauge and I, I think it's it's got the strength there i believe it's really uh pretty strong stuff there i don't know uh, i love the taste well, yeah the, it definitely has like the uh i always call it the church hash church I don't know what he's smell that, about when he says that it's like a hash Whatever. church i don't know it's weird it's like a the, the taste is definitely great too it's definitely gravy and, and it's it's very um i don't know i i really got great off of it um i enjoyed the high um I'm, i was excited to i hadn't done like i hadn't got the whole rig out and done a 
good big old dab, you know, so diamonds and stuff. Thank you. You're so, welcome. I hadn't, uh, I mean, you know, it's only like the second time I ran it. The grape fun dip. Is how do you like thing. it? Um, okay. So I thought it was going to be a competitor to specifically garlic punch. And you know how I, I am with yep. like running strains in my garden. It's like, if I'm going to bring in something new and it's going to stay, it pretty much has to beat something in my garden. Um, so being a, a gra kind of grape flavor and honestly with the, the stem rubs, I thought it was like more of a chemi taste to it. Um, turns out it's more gas and uh, with kind of that berry finish, whereas the garlic punch is definitely GMO with the, you know, kind of similar berry punch uh, right. finish. Um, it doesn't beat out garlic punch and it certainly doesn't beat out any other strain in my garden currently. Um, so I don't know that it's going to stick around because it kind of is a pain in the ass to grow and trim and harvest and all that stuff. So um, while I do like the terps on it and it is a pretty plant and everything, um, I don't know. We'll see. I've got, you know, I got that squirt and raspberry parfait coming in hot and uh, raspberry parfait is getting chopped, I think, this week. So, uh, you know, and they all look great. Yeah, I know we talked about those recently, but one of them is now just straight dark purple. One out of the five. Sweet. Yeah, it's the one right in the center of the room. So maybe you got a little extra treatment, but uh -huh. um, yeah, it's uh, that might be the winner just because of that. Because the, the other two that it's next to that are it's similar to, or it's just it's all the same except that color. So um, that's nice, you know, nice little addition to the garden. But seeing it fade like that. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I don't know. It's kind of, it's, it is quite frankly, the bottom of the barrel right now in terms of the palette in my garden. Yeah. Um, I'm not necessarily looking to cut it yet. I am still, you know, propagating it and everything, but we'll see if it makes it to 2025. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel right now about the Cabo Yeti. Um, I've had a little bit of feedback from it. Um, so, and then the, my own feedback, honestly, you know, I absolutely adore the smell and taste of it. I mean, just love, love, love it. But still, it's just not high wise. And then I had a friend who I still consider like a new smoker in general. She just like started smoking a couple years ago when I started gifting her stuff. So I like still consider her new. And she's like, she told me today, she's like, I think this would be really good for somebody that's a new smoker. And I was just like, <laughs> I was like, oh God. Okay, well, all right, thanks. That that's a good thing for me to kind of judge this a little bit. <laughs> Thank I you for the compliment, but I'm not taking that as a compliment. She well, she <laughs> compliment me taste and smell wise exactly like I said, but then she it, she basically said what I said that the high just wasn't there. Now that might be me. It might be something that we did growing wise. I don't know. I have lots, many more seeds to try, so it's not like completely done me, but. And sometimes variety is just always good too. Yeah, like, like, you know, that's likes, you know so variety is the spice of life, you know. Yeah, and I told her she might just have smoked too much of it and just been like kind of plateau-y with it, but it didn't it I, I love it. I love the look of it. Um gosh, I love the smell of it. It smells so good. But I gotta have that high too, so 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 Haas Farms uh, a little bit back asked in the chat if any anybody was uh, in the, oh, in the eclipse path on April eighth. Uh, it, it is going through Ohio and directly through Ohio, and those of us in Southern Michigan are in like the ninety nine to ninety five percentile um, totality. It, Tara, are, are you guys in the range of totality? You guys are maybe a little. little Wait, okay. Yeah, and we've got we've got the day off, so we've got a. Whole, yeah, we're planning things for the day. Actually, part of my family is planning things for the day down in Cincinnati to come up this way. So nice. I'm hoping that we can all come together. You're, you're and, probably right in path. Huh? Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to a little nature reserve area where there's a lake, and just put the kayaks in, and maybe float in the kayaks. Have some snacks, have yeah, some fruit, and just take in the nature while we watch the. Because it's only going to be like seconds, so you yeah. know, boing, it's got to be there, and you got to be. Ready. I want to hear. I want to hear what the nature does as well while it happens. You know, not just the uh, yeah. silence, bro. From silent. what I remember, the other times that I've had anything to do with an eclipse, it's been very quiet. Um, I think it was. Was it? 
2017 was the last time that we actually got the glasses out and everything, possibly. So yeah, right around there. I remember it being very, very quiet. I've got six pairs of glasses in my truck right Ruben! now. Ready to go. Ruben, Ruben. Got parked on the road. I'm ready to go. Take, take I got GML shades in my pack. I can look straight at my lights. <laughs> Maybe we should invite some people over. Maybe we should have some people come. I think everybody's always welcome to our whole house, always. I had some Indiana boys invite me down to their lake, yep. uh, from the, you know, to hang out on their ranch or whatever this oh, week yeah. at the Third Eye Craft Fair. I'm like, we just might make the trip, you know what I mean? Why yeah. not? It's, hey, I think it's worth it. You know, it only happens so many times, so why not make something of it? Why not? You know, we're yeah. we're in like the 99 percentiles. We're like, phew, what we're else can you do it? on a Monday? I don't know, you know, it's like, what the fuck? Let's go check things out. And I don't know. Kind of like how it was last Monday when we took off for Chicago. So, we, like, we did you tell everybody we went on a train ride that? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, so we took off last Monday, took a train ride to Chicago out of Ohio. It was like, what, four hours? Mm -hmm. Four hour train ride. It was super cool. I'd never been on a train. I was a little yucky at first, but I got over it. And then um, made it to Chicago, and it was a great day. We walked all over the place, did so many things, just hanging out in a, in a new place for the day, just walking around. Nine, we walked nine miles too, so we fucking walked the fuck out of the place. <laughs> you went down Navy Pier then? We did not make it to Navy Pier. We went the other way. We did Shedd Aquarium. Um, okay. We had places. We went to uh, this really <laughs> Miller's Pub. They have the best meatloaf in the whole wide world, and I am a meatloaf connoisseur. Best <laughs> meatloaf ever that I've had. Dude, I used to live up by the city, and I've never gone to Navy Pier. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I cool. so this is funny. I looked at him, and as soon as we got off the train, I was like, "How do we get to the water?" Yeah. I, I immediately wanted to go to the water, and he was like, "Really?" He didn't say anything else, the guy. I and I'm like, "Just hold on, be quiet." Yeah. So I'm like, all about water. I'm, yeah, we got to get to so the water. Cold. So we, I know it was freezing. It was snow. Freezing, it was freezing by the water. I wanted to go to the water because I'm thinking we're gonna get to the water. I'm gonna get me a fucking rock, you know. Hmm. I think like Michigan. He didn't bust my bubble. Arctic. He walked me all the way down to the very tip of where you could touch water, and there's just no rocks. There's just concrete. So I didn't get <laughs> rocks, but it was beautiful water. There's definitely areas you could walk to to find rocks. Yeah, but, but not like where we not were. where we were at. But everything we saw was super cute and I was totally for the day amazed. Good day. We okay. went on a little boat ride on the oh, Chicago, yeah. Chicago River while they had the river dyed green. From oh, Chicago. nice. So that's yeah. cool. Super like architect. architectural and historical. That was super cool and definitely gave me things to come home and look about and, you know, check out and a lot of history to Chicago. And it was, it was a great day. Good food and we uh, didn't have any troubles with anybody's or people's or anything. We actually was, smoked a doobie at the skate park. Yeah, that was one thing where we were like, I, he's like, I was like, let's smoke a doobie. And he's like, all right. And I was like, but let's go to the skate park because that's where we're going to get, not get, you know, have any trouble is at the skate park. We were you there. So. You make a bunch of friends at the skate park. No, we didn't. The boys just kind of kept looking at us. Yeah. Like, old Who are these narcs? Kids. <laughs> They're like, what are these two fuck old yeah. fuckers doing here? And we're just like, hey, I'm just smoking a doobie. Go back to business. Video and your shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, though. Good day. Good surprise. Good day. Good day. Good I day. don't think I've ever heard the words meatloaf and connoisseur in the same oh. sentence, but I will say you got to try. Okay. Uh, I Mrs. am a Figueroa's. total freaking lover of meatloaf. Where do you got to try? What is it? Mrs. Figueroa's meatloaf. It's okay. fire. <laughs> Uh, I, I seriously, I everywhere I go, if you if you've got meatloaf on the menu, I'm gonna try it. All right. Everywhere I go. Everywhere. There and this go. was by far the best. How how should I put? It? This was the best home style beef gravy, like good. Like they've been there since 1935, so I hope they got it right. You know. Well, what what makes a good well, meatloaf? Don't like. Um, this was just all around good tasting. It was moist. It had the gravy was moist good. Is it key. Had potatoes with it. Is, is gravy required for a meatloaf? No. Can no. ketchup be a gravy? Absolutely. Yeah. But I also okay. make like a, a Asian kind of meatloaf too, with like a, a like a ketchup like a glaze, like a barbecue <laughs> thing on top. So I do yeah, get you some fucking barbecue sauce. 
Yeah. Yeah. I do barbecue too. I love that's a good one too. My no, kid is not even thinking this day because I made it so oh, long <laughs> so long because I love beeloaf. Is is celery required to be an no. important component? No, no, no but it's good. I, I I don't mind celery. It's a strange crunch. We're giving away for built this for I I like celery. How about onions? I, I, onions in the meat though. I like onions too. Yeah, that's not good. I like do you, do you put brown sugar on top? Oh, hopefully. I've, I've done that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I like okay. it. I like a nice sweet meatloaf, but I like it tangy and sweet. Yeah, sweet and tangy. You know what I'm saying? You're at a spicy meatloaf. I'll be at your house this week for dinner, okay? <laughs> Let's go. I'm off Monday and Tuesday. I want some meatloaf now, guys. <laughs> Usually We've just been to Nashville, grateful too. Grateful Nashville. Oh yes, I, we used to like Nashville. Have you ever had a venison meatloaf? Yeah, I have not, because I'm a little weird about venison. So, I, I, I yeah, you might Good if, to you know. sneak it, if you sneak it in on me and don't tell me, then. <laughs> oh, okay. Well then, yeah. Never mind. I we don't do like that. The best way to do things <laughs> with me is just to sneak it in on her, and then <laughs> after I'm walking out the door, be like, "How'd you like dinner?" That's all Troy. You hear that, Troy? <laughs> he don't eat anything. He's a Mikey. Oh, yeah. yeah, now we have to have like an MBGS meatloaf cook-off oh, or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Be- Becca's got a really nice little pan that she makes banana bread in, and I'm just thinking about how much ground beef I can fit in that second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the words. Oh, at least a quarter cow. Yep. Yeah. Meatloaf. You know, I get it. I feel the same way. It's like those, um, what are those, uh, those holiday loaves that they do with like the oh, olive yeah. looking things in it? Fruit, and it's just cake. fruit cakes. Yeah, yeah. What are, what are those? A fruit and cake. I never I mean, had two delicious things, but not when you put them together and whatever the hell that abomination is. Okay. Speaking of olives, never tried one. Never tried one. Don't ruin the, don't, oh man. <laughs> Love olives, especially green olives. I am no, not. Olives are good. But what about what's that? What's that one thing? Oh. The uh, no the olive loaf, olive loaf, oh, yeah, the bologna. Oh, it's bologna, oh, basically. Oh. That's as bad as pickle loaf. No, no, just no. All of it. I, I, oh. isn't that the bologna? Is that it's the bologna? basically oh. spam with olives in it, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like rolled up into a, a thing that wow. looks like bologna that you could slice. And I don't even know what you do with it. Throw it at cars or something off the freeway, like bridge. Uh, yeah, I, what do you don't do, with do that? that. <laughs> don't be throwing anything off freeways now. It, it, it made its way in our refrigerator when I was. I mean, kid. don't even buy an olive loaf. How about we start there? Oof, it gives me shivers. Uh, uh, you know, it was a popular thing in the refrigerator was the ham spread. With the ham spread. Oh, uh, that was my. Uh, my I, I get down. Uh, I get down to that. Still, I don't even know what that is. But yeah, those ham sandwiches, bro. Yeah. What yeah. is that? It's like knuckles. It's like knuckles and mayonnaise. And, and it's like it's eggs, knuckles. knuckles, and yeah. It's like, it's like, an egg egg yeah. It's it's like egg salad with like a, the leftover yeah. pig. Bad food topic. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go with the bad food tonight. <laughs> All right. I, I've got one for you guys. The only meal that my entire family turned down in front of my mother, like all in unison, we're like, nope, we're ordering pizza because this fucking ain't it tonight, right? Love she it. decided for whatever reason to make a hot Tuna casserole. No, that I'm is out. the fucking worst thing I've ever. Heard. Hey, I like. I can get done on a tuna casserole if it's done right, man. I like tuna casserole. No. I, I can do a cold. I'll do cold tuna and mustard on a, on a cracker before okay. I do that. That oh, awesome. right now. That's like triggering to me right now. I'm okay, to as a kid though, one of the like staples like that we could do was mac and cheese and a can of tuna in it, and that was warm. Sometimes we'd have peas in there too, and that's warm. But that that was like that's fancy. Cream, I know. And then you get the cold though, and put the shells mayo, not the cheese. Mayo. Yeah, mayo on the cold. My mom made it. That's the cold one. But warm mac and cheese, man. My boys devour that all day. Oh, 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 noodles? That's how we do it. This house. Kids, tuna casserole, and all us kids. No, the mac and cheese with the tuna. 
no tuna casserole here. See, my thing's always been hot dogs with mac and cheese, but now you're talking. Oh, uh, we don't do hot dogs, no. Uh, good Lord, no. I'll do a hot dog before I'll take it. The only kind of hot dog she's doing is the one that come out of a can like tuna, and it's the Vienna sausages. All right, and oh, those no. are kind of high. No, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll I'll even do Vienna sausages before uh, tuna casserole. I'll, I'll do spam. I'll yeah, try spam. Turkey hot dogs, to be honest, but you know. Ooh, gosh, that's like in, in the, right in the day. Me. In the day, it was hot dog, hot dog. Dude, why do they do turkey ground anything? Why is turkey a thing? Why? What happened? What? Hap- what a, why? Sliced turkey is good. Regular turkey. Now, when you have any other meat except an olive loaf around, okay, I'll take turkey over an olive loaf, but you know what I mean? I'd rather bologna than turkey. Thanksgiving. You don't eat turkey? It's like chicken, but a different. What do you eat for Thanksgiving? Ham? Last time we had uh, we had ribeye and uh, lobster tails because we said we're not doing this shit anymore. <laughs> Damn. I can't eat red meat often. This shit all over tradition. I see how you are. Okay. Yeah, we just we just got rid of the tradition last year. I think we talked about it on the show, but I just take a turkey and I traditionally put it in a plastic bag and throw a traditional uh two liter of Dr. Bag? Pepper. Yeah. And put a two liter of Dr. Pepper in there, seal it up in there, right. and it's good. Yeah. Eat the Is that a turkey? Yeah, it's good as hell. I mean, yeah. I believe you, but <laughs> I believe you. If you've been like doing it, twenty-three flavors or something. I didn't eat any of it. But <laughs> this but, but the son who doesn't eat turkey, yeah, honest, turkey. honest. So my boys devour that turkey, so <laughs> I had no complaints. I just didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Turkey is good. Yeah, I like it. Okay, I'm gonna have to try that. Good. It's easy. All right, here's one that everyone else in my family hates, but I'm totally down with, probably because it's reminiscent of my childhood, but it's still not as good as I remember them being, and I've tried so many different brands. Fish sticks. Dude, uh, the only way you eat fish sticks is frozen. I yeah, refuse to eat them cooked. South Park. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What did she just say? Are they cooked before you? Wait. They're cooked. <laughs> like, when you buy them in the box at the store, they are fully cooked, but I literally <laughs> eat them frozen. I've done it since I was a kid. I don't buy them much anymore, but... I won't eat it cooked. I fucking hate it cooked, but I'll devour it. Well, no, no, you, you eat it cooked, just not heat it up. Let's be clear. It's frozen. It's frozen. <laughs> I grab it out of the box. The like fully, it's fully cooked, cooked, frozen. I grab that it out of the box. It's wild. It's just in your just in case you do the uncooked yeah, version. I've that before. I think I think um I think Russ needs to scoot over and Emily just needs to take the show here from here on out for the next 13 minutes and tell us about all these food combinations she's yeah. come up with. <laughs> <laughs> Louisa, the fuck you say? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean do you know what a hush puppy is? <laughs> No, that's got the bread and stuff around it, right? Yeah, I just remember them from Long John Silver's. It seems like something you would enjoy. No, good lord, no. Good. <laughs> oh, dude, hush puppies were so, like, if you got I them, them dry. Oh. I hate fish. I won't eat fish. I'll eat tuna fish, and I'll eat frozen fish sticks, and that's it. I, well, I have you ever had smoked salmon that's wrapped in a, a nice leafy vegetable wrapped in raw vegetables? That I'm was really excited. a two-star Michelin restaurant. And then no, definitely no. I'm excited about that pistachio that I saw that looked interesting. That was pretty. I might try that. I love. Hold on now. What about pistachio pudding? That's delicious. I think I like that. I don't know if I've ever had it. I feel like I don't know. I don't know if I've ever had it. I love rice. I like pistachio. Okay. Pistachio ice cream. Hey, we're getting into good stuff, guys. Back it off. Back it off. Uh, Have you ever had milk that was curdled that you poured into your cereal and didn't realize it until you got halfway through the bowl of cereal? Cheese. Yes, I don't eat milk. Milk. Drink milk. Nothing to do with milk. Nope. Real way. milk? I don't like milk too much. <laughs> Buttermilk. So that's, that's just creating a good gut biome right there. You get some black <laughs> acid, and you know. That's gross. Oh. It's just not going to taste or smell very pleasant. Okay, yeah. No, as a younger child, either. my aunt so was cute. trying to pour what she thought was milk into my cereal, but it was orange juice, and I just oh. started eating it because I was young and just ate it all up. And, Thanks for breakfast. You know, I thought it was delicious. I didn't tell her till like later in buddy, life that she. Buddy, did. you made French toast with cumin. <laughs> oh, that's a spicy joke. <laughs> cottage cheese, and if you like cottage cheese, cottage cheese with like pineapples or peaches. What about that? Yeah. No, we're not talking about good food. All right, speaking of cottage cheese. 
I'll tell you about a bad experience with cottage cheese. Not that I eat it. But what of my quote unquote bodybuilding type friends in college would eat yeah. nothing but a scoop of well, he'd like the, the know, bowl of cottage cheese with a like I don't know half a bottle of peanut butter or a can oh, wow. of it. Yeah. peanut butter and cottage Very cheese good. together. Just stirred it up and ate it. I don't know. It's I can't. I would try it. it. I'd be interested. I'd be It'd probably be it. better than cottage cheese on its own, if we're honest. It's such a I put cottage cheese in my guacamole. There's very few things you can put peanut butter in that it doesn't. Bro. Why cheese. ruin the guacamole? It's not ruined. It's pretty damn good. I put sugar in my guacamole. That's amazing. I don't have the munchies tonight, that's, that's for sure. I do not have the munchies. What? We're, we're not going, going for it. <laughs> it got ruined tonight. Yeah, who's so got, got, got the munchies? It's, well, it's, it's a new us in 2024, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Putting everybody on diets. <laughs> All right. Do you guys know how everybody, uh, like a lot of people, I should say, say uh, like ke- they'll put ketchup on everything, right? What is your guys' go-to condiment that's like that? I'll start. Mine's mustard. syrup. I could put syrup mustard. on everything. Yeah, mustard's probably mine. Oh, syrup? Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah, syrup. You could put syrup on eggs. You could put syrup on bread. Oh, on eggs. Put- it fixes yeah. everything about eggs. <laughs> I would eat eggs. I don't eat eggs. I haven't had eggs in probably years. I would with some fucking syrup. I had egg yesterday. I put hot sauce Syrup comes from a tree or from a bee. Like uh, a mustard person. Probably, I would say barbecue sauce. Sweet baby rice. Hickory. Mustard probably is. Or, or barbecue Good sauce choice. is probably For, like, for a savory, sauce. it would be mustard. I All right. Mustard. Now that we've talked about our favorite ones, Lee's favorite, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. <laughs> I fucking hate mayonnaise. Oh, my God. Ranch. This is me off work Fuck when I have to give man. people a mayonnaise cup. I mean, I literally like it. People like to like man. You do oh, not need fucking that much mayonnaise. Jack Tabasco. I think Cholula. Cholula would be a great one to put on anything. I think Cholula. you use that one, don't you? Yeah, like I'm okay with that one. But fuck ranch. <laughs> Becky, you've been quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like condiments at all, to be honest. I never was a dip really? ever. Okay. So I, I always got honey. I yeah. like honey. Honey for chicken nuggets. Oh, I do too. I like honey on my nice. chicken nuggets too, especially for yeah. 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 syrup. Yeah. Shout out to Amazing Grow. He hooked me up with some honey. I was only a cinnamon honey and uh, what some kind of special flower honey. I can't remember now. <laughs> I know that special flower Which honey. One? Which flower? <laughs> this is the ferment out of our peppers this last season. Oh, nice. I, 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 can see, I can see two seeds. Two pepper seeds. In there. So you know, jet. Chunky, chunky. I'm going to filter it too much. A little watery on top. It keeps uh, a kick in there. There was certainly some uh, mold that grew inside of all of this stuff, and that's part of the process. That was the beginning of the process. It's, it's not molded. Not but, mold. Fermented. But, but mold grows on top. You get a little white mold and scrape it not off. On that. I don't know. He left it out for a night. No, so I've known him to get in the process. Have you? And now you know. Have you made anything with the sourdough? Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not the mold. No. The white mold's okay. I brought the sourdough bread that I made today. I want to eat it gallon. right now. I want to eat it right now. Some butter. God, that's totally. Uh, yeah. We're just, we're we're just, we got to cut off short, guys. I'm sorry. Short. <laughs> He's out. <laughs> it is over. <laughs> No, I'm like I'm intimidated by the like having to let it rise for a couple hours and then again, and I'm like I I, I just need to do it. I know, and I just put okay. It I'll send you the steps when I'm doing them just throughout a day. The next time that I make a loaf or like prep it and then make it, and I'll just send you the steps so you know like this is literally like a two day process for how it goes. This is cool. um, because I totally understand what you mean. Like it's super intimidating seeing that and like not understanding either. It's taken me. Just take a video of it as you do. That's it. what I was gonna do. Yeah, I'll just send it to her and then she'll see. So like I'll feed it the night before and I'll tell her like, hey, I'm feeding it right now. And then in the morning I'll take a picture of what it looks like so you oh, can always hear it. Okay. You know. Yeah, that'd be helpful. I'm like. The thing I've had the hardest time getting down is the baking time. Um, and I seem to under bake it. So when it cools down and then I cut into it, it still is a little gummy. Um, well, it's not, it's to the point where it's not where it's supposed to be. Okay. But fingers crossed. I haven't cut oh. this one open yet. Do you do it in a, like a Dutch oven or do you do it in a, on just 
pan. So I had one of those baking um, stones and I broke it. So the one successful one that I had, unfortunately, was on that baking stone. And so I had to figure out how to do it in the pans that I have. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is like a camping, um, a camping. No, it's metal and it has um, it has a lid on it. Um, and all of it is metal and safe to go in the oven. So I've made bread in that now. Um, and then I also just picked up from the thrift store, like um, it's for like a, a half size roaster. You know, it's like a roaster that's maybe this big. Um, and I'm just using that like a Dutch oven. Um, so I'll put at the bottom some parchment and some flour and then finish it in that. When I take it out the last time to rise and score it before I put it back in, I take my Dutch oven and put it in the oven so that's heating up with the oven. Because I don't have one to like flip it into and I don't have any banneton baskets to flip out of, if that makes sense. So yeah. you can't like preheat. Got you. Oh, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but I kind of like how it's, like at first it was intimidating, but now it's a little bit more methodical and I like the steps to it. What's cool too is like the, the discard, you find so many uses for just the discard. So even if you just wanted to keep it alive and multiply it, keep taking the discard, you could just make stuff with that. Yeah, I think the other morning I had made some pancakes and then you ended up making waffles and pancakes or something like that too. I'll just mix the starter in like with my mix that I have and it like really makes them fluff up more. It and I just like that little paste it gives. Yeah, totally. I've made Cheez-Its um, using cheddar cheese and using mozzarella cheese with a bunch of herbs in it now. Mm -hmm. um, the hardest part is rolling it out thin enough and that you can use your discard for. And that is like a one cup of flour, one cup of discard, and then like a hell of a lot of cheese. Mm -hmm. To your heart's content, have at it. Nice. <laughs> Like, good. Are we bake at like 350 or something? Really no, good. I've been doing everything. So like I was doing 400 for everything because that's what like all the recipes I saw. And then some were saying like 450, but then I kept like burning stuff too quick. So I've been doing 420. Hey. It's working. <laughs> no, I set my oven to that a lot. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? That's what I can remember. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've got a bread question for you. If uh, what's the whole deal with people saying if one what's part of the deal? bread molds? What's the deal with bread mold? <laughs> Everybody says that with the bread of molds, that the whole bread's bad. You gotta throw it away. What's the deal? No, I just cut it off. Are you kidding me? Just the part goes bad. <laughs> yeah, I would just cut off the part that's bad. Keep going. I would say, though, if you aren't using it quick enough, then freeze it. Pre-slice it and then pop it in the freezer because that'll save it and save it from going stale. Why yeah. pre-slice it? Just it's, it's, it's harder to do it. It's, and then yeah, you can bring out just two slices if you need yeah. to. Fair enough. Uh, I'll throw rye bread out before I'll throw anything out. I think it's just because I can't really see it too well, like especially if it's like pumpernickel. I'll like toss it just because I don't want to take any chances of it. You're going to see like a white mold over a black mold that you couldn't identify on a bread like that. I didn't even think of that. The rye, mold, rye is the one you want to be worried about. I can't remember the name of it, but there is a toxin that it's like a hallucinogenic toxin. Yeah, I don't know why, but I've always just... With rye. Ergot. Ergot. There you go. I couldn't think of it. Ergot. They make LSD out of ergot. Yeah. But so yeah. So keep the rye when it goes dry. <laughs> yeah. So let's all go to the store tonight and buy some old rye bread. Uh, Everybody get the rye bread. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow on the news, there's been a shortage in rye bread throughout Michigan tonight. <laughs> Stock up. <laughs> It'll come in handy. I really like making bagels, though. That's probably the thing I make. Just give yourself some berries. I make sourdough bagels, too. And oh my God, I love them. Again, pre slice before you freeze it, though. Otherwise, they're fucking rocks. They don't last around me. I just eat this stuff. There's no, re no need to freeze around me. Awesome. That's they're so fun to make. I'm not even going to lie. They're just the funnest to make. She's so got a doll. She makes it look so easy. It's like, it's not as easy as what she makes it look, you know, to flop them around and make it look like a nice. I really don't think it's that hard. Yeah. It <laughs> like, make it look hard, but it is. Um, but yeah, I love cooking, but so the way I learn, I have to do it. That's exactly. It's so much more helpful to like, I learned a lot of cooking from other people. 
Mm -hmm. I worked in kitchens for a while and that's, you know, where I learned a lot of what I can do like with time, timing and stuff. But with a new recipe, I really feel like I have to try it like a couple times and like ad lib. Movement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like the recipe that I gave you with the starter, mm -hmm. I've already changed it in like two other places <laughs> so yeah. that it just like works a little bit better for what I like doing. So I've okay. got one more Speaking question. Make it your own. Mm-hmm. There you go. Well, I've got one more question for everybody on the panel. Uh, how do you guys eat your, if you were to eat a steak, how would you have it cooked? Like what, you know, medium, rare, rare, well done, whatever. I'm a medium. Or medium rare with a really good sear on it because I want those edges to be nice and crispy. I'm just a medium. Medium rare, extra peppercorn, salt, and yum. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no sauce. No sauce. I, I don't like any sauce. No, I just medium. Just I want to throw onions on that though. Yeah, I, I lean medium, medium to medium rare, and uh, yeah, bring me to how you fucking make it. I want to see what you got. Give it to me. Yeah, I don't want medium. I think medium over medium. Yeah, I don't want it to bleed too much. No, I do not like any bleed. No. No, I definitely want there to be some, but I just don't want it to be. Yeah, I don't want any. Medium's good. Depends, depends, on depends on the cut. Depends on the cut. But yeah, I'll take some blood. Becca. We had asparagus with it. Oh, oh, asparagus, yeah. That's good. Becca, do you eat steak? I love steak, but I'm like, I don't like fat, and so I really like a filet. I would eat the fat. Okay. Right? That's yeah. Good. It's like, I don't, I don't have a have a can. even on any cut, like if I, I don't want to do it. Crunch, it freaks you don't have to, you can just swallow it whole. Yeah, I know. If it's I the could hard eat fat. Eat, you got to have that fat run. A T bone, I don't think I would do medium rare. I'd probably do like medium on T bone. I like medium oh. well. I know it's bad. No but way. I'm a little less, uh, less red. Troy, less than not least. Medium, uh, medium rare. Medium to medium rare. I like I'll it. do medium well in a stir fry, though. I'm so hungry like now, guys. I think that's the show. So let's oh. go eat. <laughs> Good call. Good Cheers. Call. We're going to have to do panda. Until next time. Keep growing, everybody. Good night, everybody.